Today is the day of the hummingbird. I've done a hummingbird mask. This is my hummingbird homage. As a story for you guys about hummingbird, she is literally the symbol of beauty, love, and joy. So we have the symbolism of, she's like the jeweled beauty. She's the jeweled flyer. She's the ruby throat and she is spectacular. So I actually spent hours sitting in meditation and honoring the hummingbird. And while I was, beautiful songs were playing on my Pandora, which was really, really cool when that does happen. I had blackbirds sing in the dead of night. So that was really beautiful. And then we had yesterday, the beautiful, joyful, playful innocence of the porcupine. And if you really wanna go into symbolisms, I would describe the porcupine as the child. Okay. And I'm gonna show you this. This beautiful hummingbird necklace I have, and I'm that beautiful hummingbird necklace I just showed you, I picked up in Jerome, Arizona. It was because of all the different experiences I've had with hummingbirds. I'm gonna start in the simplistic end of things, which is basically the description of hummingbird and how she serves us. So she is the pollinator, she is the nectar drinker. She is fast and she's amazing. One, they can fly 2,000 miles to go from one source to another as they move and follow the flowers and the seasons. Two, when they're flapping their wings, when it's slowed down on a camera, their wings create an infinity motion. Three, they're like the feathered bees. And then finally, they really are very brave. They're incredibly brave. They're not shy. If they know that you are serving them a source of nectar from your porch or balcony or your garden and they get to know you, they have no problem getting in close. They're not fearful. Hummingbirds have the hearts of lions, the feathers of diamonds and rubies, and the souls of beauty, love, and joy. The way you would apply it to your day is you really want to seek the nectar, okay, inside of your soul and inside of the world around you. You want to seek what is beautiful and then you want to emphasize that beauty. You want to bring beauty to the people you care for and love. You want to expose what is flowering, abundant, and blossoming. This is a beautiful being that lives entirely off of these flowers. A flower deity, a deva, a fairy. You can call her what you want. She's one of my favorites. I want to share some meaningful stories of hummingbird with you today. Birds are incredibly sacred. They are amazing and deeply intelligent and deeply spiritual. And I would even describe them as interdimensional and transdimensional because I have seen birds do things like blink in and blink out. <laughs> like, okay, that bird did something impossible. Uh, with hummingbird, again, with them not being shy, whenever they wanna make a deep and uh, very spiritual connection with you, they don't hesitate to get very close. So if you apply it to your day, beauty, joy, sincerity, passion, courage, harmony, and the dance of colors. Color therapy. Color therapy is really meaningful. Whatever colors you wear, if you're wearing a lot of drab colors, let's say you're just wearing a lot of taupes, beiges, earth tones, which are all fine. I'm sure um, a lot of you look really good in those colors. It doesn't allow you to start utilizing color energy and in a way that can start raising your vibration. Think of hummingbirds. They sound like a bee, right? high vibrational beings. Well, hummingbird also covers marriage, vibration to the heart. I'm gonna go into how hummingbird has um, in, and arrived in my life more than once. I was 19 years old and I had this beautiful, beloved familiar. And those of you who don't know what the word familiar means, familiar is a animal who works with you in a magical context. It's just whatever pet that they are actually connecting to on a spiritual basis and doing magical works with, and that's why they're called familiars. Well, my familiar was a beautiful gray cat with soft, fluffy fur and the mask of a fox on his face with incredibly long legs, and his name was Merlin. I wasn't very uh, well off. I was I was dealing with a lot of financial issues and didn't have a lot of money to put forth in making sure that everything went smoothly in my life. And I'd gotten Merlin when I was 18 years old when I didn't think this was ever going to be a problem. I, I felt he would be cared for and that I'd have time to put my life together. And that's not how it happened because life 
just keeps happening. Life, life likes to come at you. That day, my cat became incredibly ill. I have no idea now that I'm thinking about it what made him incredibly ill, but I was really concerned about whether or not I would have the finances to take care of him. And Merlin was my heart. First name Merlin, middle name Angel, last name Heart, because of how much he, he danced within my heart and my soul. I went outside and I was sitting on my front porch and I burst into tears and it was really painful for me because I didn't know how everything was going to work out or whether or not I'd be able to take care of this beautiful being. Who and as I was sitting there bawling tears, just like eyes blurred up, face red, the ugly cry, I hear this <coughs> open my eyes and a hummingbird is right in front of my nose. It was this far from my nose and it was holding perfectly still and speaking to me and my heart surged. I felt that the hummingbird was expressing to me that it would be okay and that my beautiful angel heart, my beautiful cat would find his way and we would make it to the next stage and I would be able to take good care of him. And within an hour, a phone call came in from somebody who said that they were going to help me take him to the vet and make sure he was cared for no matter what it cost. He made it. Now, fast forwarding on the time machine, it was 1999 and my beautiful Merlin was very, very ill again, but this time he had an inoperable intestinal cancer. And so we had to ask a friend who worked for a vet tech to come over because we didn't want to take him to the vet and distress him. And so we wanted him to um, go peacefully in our house. And of course, this was this cat, this soul walker that I had worked with for many, many years and who had taught me many, many things. The moment came, it was done very respectfully and very peacefully. And I took my cat and I wrapped him in fabrics and, so that I could take him for burial because I was going to bury my cat rather than cremate. And as I got into the car, I burst into tears because my beautiful cat soulmate is, is now out of my life. And I turned the radio on, U2's song, New Year's Day, it's playing on the radio. And I'm, I have this blaring in my ears, I will be with you again. And as I'm bursting tears, a hummingbird flies right in front of the window of my car. Now, and I realized that same magic and spirit that had reassured me when he'd been sick when he was much younger was now returning and connecting with me in this very intense and beautiful way to remind me that love was eternal. There it was. It was there the day that my heart was breaking when I thought my cat might not make it and it was there again to greet me when my cat had transitioned and I felt like that hummingbird was carrying the heart of my cat back to spirit. Now let's move forward again. So we're going through the time machine with Hummingbird and I'm living in a beautiful property and I'm taking care of the garden and I'm very connected with the flowers and very connected with planting and taking care of the pollinators, the bees, the hummingbirds. And I'm very invested in making sure that this garden thrives. And in the two or three years that I was caretaking this garden, the plants were exploding with life. Well, one day, after having this really intense dream about transformation, and I'd spent of the same two or three years that I was on this property, constantly rescuing birds that would get into this indoor-outdoor sunroom that had become kind of my way of life at the time. And I opened the door, and a hummingbird is sitting on my doorstep. So I lift the hummingbird up in my hands, and I offer it water, and I speak to it, and after about 15 minutes, it flies back to the heavens. We're moving to another time period, much closer to now. I was in this beautiful, deep meditation. Now, so that evening, I was in a ceremony to do a blessing on the planet, a ceremony of blessing the trees, the rivers, the land, and really very invested in it. And in the middle of vision, I'm sitting with a, with a flowering plant. I, and in this beautiful ceremony and meditation, I ask the flowering plant if there's anything that I can do for it. Because of course I'm in ceremonial meditation with this beautiful plant. It says to me, I would like some butterflies. I speak, oh. 
well, if you'd like to have butterflies, then you shall have butterflies. And I sweep my hand in a grand gesture. I see all these butterflies flying out of my hands. It was beautiful. And then the plant said, well, you know, I'm also kind of partial to hummingbirds. And I said, well, then you shall have hummingbirds. And I do a sweeping gesture and these hummingbirds fly out of my hands. And after I was done, I put the plant outside. This is the next morning. And I go back out and a bird had placed a sorghum seed in the blossom of the flower. But this isn't my first time of experiencing birds coming into my life and bringing me gifts. Birds are incredibly generous and very interactive. And in the last couple of years, they've been planting all these flowering wildflowers around my property. And I had this big empty pot that I'd, I was gonna plant something and I hadn't made my mind up in. And then spring came and the whole pot bloomed wheat. That reminded me that they know what we eat, right? They are perfectly capable of being aware of our activity. They are not naive about human activity. And every single time they plant plants around the property or in any empty pot that I leave, it's always food.